Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, I have a dialed in version with some extra bells and whistles of the familiar soup can or coffee can forge. The first thing you might have noticed and be asking yourself is, uh, why is the forge facing up? Well, that's because I built it to work in two positions for two different uses. The original design idea is not mine. On Nighthawk and Light, there's actually a great video on how to build the soup can forge. I'm making this video with my modifications as part of a community video response. Please feel free to look to the description below to get the link to his original video and additional information that will be important in building your version of this. So let's go ahead and move forward with breaking down how this build has been put together and then we'll get back to seeing both positions in action. Most of the parts that I used in this build were actually repurposed from other items that I already had. If you want some more details about those parts, please look to the description below for a full list. This is one of my first major modifications to the original design. I actually put these screws down the side that can be used just as feet alone, but then I added the bars to the bottom so that it can be used as a stand. Then I put four more screws through the bottom of the can to use as feet so I can set it upright to be used as a foundry. After the two stand modifications, I also took an old whipped cream can, cut a notch in the bottom and took both ends out so that I could use to form the inside lining of my forge foundry. I have made larger size foundries using refractory cement, but in this particular build, I went ahead and used the 50-50 mix of sand and plaster of Paris to use as my interior liner. I really like the efficient method that Nighthawk and Light used for working with these materials. And to make that easier to check out, I have put the link to that video in the description below. For safety's sake, you really do need to make sure that your forge lining is completely dry and cured before you pump it up to full heat. I was really pleased with how this turned out, and I've had a lot of fun working on some small projects using this new forge. With a simple but safe flip of the wrist, my mini forge quickly becomes a mini foundry. I'm not gonna lie, I was not expecting this to work really great. However, I have had a lot of fun melting some different things down and trying to push the limits of what this can do. Turns out, for a small project, it works great. You've probably noticed there was one other modification that I made. I put a hole in the burner mounting tube and then wrapped it with a piece of aluminum to help control the airflow. By twisting the aluminum, I can open or close the flow of air, just like you might do on a barbecue or a heating vent. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by Dialed In DIY today to check out my community response video for my adaptation on the soup can forge. Please let me know if you enjoyed it or got something out of it by clicking on that thumbs up below. I'd also love it if you'd subscribe while you're here and check out many of my other playlists. Please feel free to come back in the future because, as always, there will be plenty more dialed-in DIY to come.